This is Herman Brooks. Herman is just like the rest of us. Every day he has to make all kinds of decisions. Like what to wear, whom to date, and when to panic. Now, these decisions should be easy, but if you take a look inside Herman's head, you'll see why he sometimes has trouble making up his mind. I'm Herman's intellect. Without me, he couldn't hold his job, pay his rent, or tie his shoes. I'm Herman's sensitivity. Without me, he wouldn't feel tenderness, honesty, or love. The good things in life. Oh, I'm Herman's anxiety, and I keep him out of trouble. And believe me, there's trouble everywhere. I'm Herman's lust. Without me, he'd miss out on all the good stuff. You know, fun, food, babes. Sometimes they agree. Usually they don't. But this struggle is going on inside all of us. And it's all going on inside Herman's head. You're not looking through the personals again. Jay, don't you remember what happened last time with that woman? First of all, Herman, the hair grew back. <laughs> Second, I'm not reading the personals. I'm looking through the career opportunity section. Come on, I told you Waterton Publishing is not going broke. They just lost some money last year. Hey, it is rough out there, Hermo. Nobody is hiring right now. If Waterton does start cutting back, I'll need something stable and secure to fall back on. Huh, here we go, be an actor. <laughs> Jay, have you ever acted before? Are you kidding? Listen to this. <clears throat> I love you. I have always loved you. I wouldn't ask you to do this with me if I didn't love you. That's acting. Good morning, all. Good morning, Herman. Good morning, Louise. What does that smell? This is New York City, Herman. Which smell do you mean? The burning smell. Oh, that. I think Mr. Bracken started smoking again. He hasn't smoked in three years. I can't believe he'd start again. Mr. Bracken, are you smoking? No, Herman, I'm on fire. Don't you know you're polluting the air? And you're forcing us to breathe your smoke. Besides that, there is a more tragic and personal side to all of this. Exactly. You're sticking up my clothes. <laughs> this is my department, and I will smoke if I want to. Mr. Waterton doesn't like it. I don't care. Good morning, everyone. Oh, Mr. Waterton. <laughs> Hello, Paul. <laughs> Good of you to come down and see us, sir. This is Sally Wainwright. She's with the consulting company I hired to help me cut costs. Hello? Hello. Hello. I heard we lost a little money. A little money is when you lose $20 at the dry cleaners. I lost $50 million. You checked your other pants? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> well, we have other departments to see. Bye, Paul. <laughs> All right, let's get back to work. Mr. Bracken. Herman, you're not going to be one of those pain in the neck, don't smoke around me kind of people, are you? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Fine. I won't smoke in the office. Uh, Herman, it was very brave of you to confront him like that. Well, if he wants to smoke, he's just going to have to go outside. <laughs> Mr. Bracken, what are you doing out there? Smoking. I hope I'm not bothering you. Well, this is ridiculous. Why don't you just stop? You think it's so easy? I'm not saying it's easy, but if I had to do it, I could. Oh, you say that because you never smoke. Let me see you give up something that you're addicted to. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Bracken, but I don't have any addictions. Oh, really? How about that four pounds of sugar you eat every day? Every time I look at you, you're eating a donut, a bear claw, or a cookie. That's not an addiction. I eat that stuff because I like it. Besides, I can quit any time I want to. I tell you what, I'll quit smoking. Let me see you give up sugar. Fine, I can do that. I mean all sugar. This is a wonderful opportunity to help Mr. Bracken stop smoking. And if we don't eat sugar, we'll show him how easy it is to give up an addiction. Yeah, what's in it for us? We'll be contributing to the health and well-being of someone we care about. What's in it for us? <laughs> Sex. Hi, man. <laughs> You gotta know how to speak his language. <laughs> okay, I don't eat sugar, and you don't smoke. Let the games begin. <laughs> Who 
are you kidding, Herman? You can't go one hour without eating sugar. You want to bet? Yeah. If you lose, you have to take me to the finest restaurant in New York. And if I win? Then I guess somebody else will have to take me. <laughs> Bacon fried. Oh. <laughs> Tomorrow, gentle rosebud opening on the first day of spring. Hey. What the hell was that all about? I'm serious about finding another career, Herm. I started an acting class. I discovered I'm a thespian trapped in a man's body. <laughs> Donut Herman? <laughs> What's wrong with him? I don't know. He's been like that for the last two days. Oh, this is ridiculous. Someone should talk to him. Not me. Well, I'll draw straws. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> well, fair's fair. Uh, excuse me. I... <laughs> Oh, boy, a healthy rice cake and black coffee. No sugar. Mmm, not bad. <laughs> it's going very well. <laughs> I, I want it. But it's sturdy and moldy. Oh, no, no. Don't think of it as dirt. Think of it as minerals. And technically, mold could be considered a vegetable. I'm so Let's see. Oh, my God. We're holding garbage on our hands and contemplating idiot. Mr. Bracken is right. We are addicted to sugar. Okay, okay. I don't have to eat it. Just let me lick it once. <laughs> We've heard that before. <laughs> Hi, Louise. How you doing? How's the back going? I'm doing fine, Louise. Do you think Mr. Bracken stuck to his deal? Well, I don't know. So, did you smoke last night? <laughs> Good for you. Hi, is Paul Bracken in? Why, yes, he is. Who may I say is here? Bob Kelly, vice president with the company. Senior VP or junior VP? Senior. Married? No. Engaged? No. Are you gay? No. Hi, I'm Teddy Newman. <laughs> Kelly, what are you doing here? Well, you're not going to believe this, but that consultant Waterton hired is recommending cutting my whole department. So? What are you telling me for? Well, rumor has it a lot more departments are going to be cut. I came here to tell you there's an employees meeting tomorrow. See if we can stop it. 4 p.m. Macinelli's. Oh, my God! We're all going to lose our jobs! Oh, Louise, stop it. He was talking about other departments. Research is vital to this company. We have nothing to worry about. Herman, oh, buddy. What do you say we postpone that little agreement? Well, considering the pressure we may be under that... Ah, we... I knew it. I knew you couldn't do it. I won the bet. We're going to do it, Hetty. We're just not going to do it now. And not while the company's in trouble. Oh, you're just using this little scare as a way to get out of the bet. You think it's so easy. Let's see you give up something. I have nothing to give up. I don't smoke. I don't stuff my face with sugar. I'm perfect. Ask any man I've ever dated. <laughs> <laughs> Men, that's your addiction. Don't be ridiculous. You can't be addicted to men. Yaha, uh -huh. I saw it on Oprah. <laughs> well, unlike those losers on Oprah, I can kick it any time I want to. Oh, yeah? Well, let's see you try, Hetty. Fine, I'll give up men. Piece of cake. Chocolate cake. <laughs> Kiss my butt. <laughs> oh, some other time, Herman, I've given up men. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, no sugar, no cigarettes, no men. I want to do it, too. I want to give up something. I'm going to give up horseradish. <laughs> Louise, when you get a real addiction, let us know. All right, let's get back to work like it was a normal day. Hello again. I just came from accounting. Had to let go of half the department. Well, let's see what we can do here. Just go about your business. Don't mind me. Looks like I picked a bad day to give up horseradish. <laughs> Oh, another delicious breakfast.
pounds of rice cakes, Herman? So, how's your love life? Couldn't be better, Herman. I dated myself last night. I took myself out for a wonderful dinner, but over dessert I got a little mad at myself. So this morning I sent myself flowers and a lovely note of apology. Okay, so after one day, you're obviously completely deranged. Good morning, Louise. Brazil nuts. What? I'm giving up Brazil nuts. I've had that monkey on my back way too long. Courage, Louise. The most important thing is to keep a level head. Don't let anything rattle you. Ah, uh, who the hell put this chocolate donut on my desk? <laughs> that is a sick thing to do. And whoever did it is a sick, sick person. That was my donut. Not to worry, I've done this before. Look what we're doing. We're behaving like a lunatic in front of this woman. I think that we should eat some cake. What about Mr. Bracken? We're helping support his effort to stop smoking. I think we should eat some cake. Why don't we... Cake! You'll have to excuse Herman. He's a little on edge today. Brazil nuts? You gave up Brazil nuts. Couldn't kick it, Herman. It was too big. Yeah, I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, Miss Wainwright. I mean, normally this is very productive, warm, nurturing office. Oh, yeah? Well, I got something for you, too. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Wainwright. Excuse me, Paul. I Leave wanted to me remind... alone. Well, I was only what? talking to Your Paul. story, pal. Why do you keep throwing yourself at me? I told you, I'm off, man. I'm clean. Now I never want to see you again. <laughs> Eddie, Herman, Louise, can I see you in my office, please? I'm calling this off. Well, you can't do that. We made a deal. Herman, we are about to lose our jobs. I'm smoking, you're eating, you're dating, and Louise, I don't even remember what you were giving up. I'm giving up being negative. From now on, no more negativity. Forget it. The deal is off. Louise! Are you being positive, Herman? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're in too far. We can't give up now. The last three days have been hell, and I am not going to go through this again. Herman, this just isn't the time to do this. Mr. Bracken, I know we're under a lot of pressure, but there's always going to be an excuse. I say we do it. And if we don't, what do you propose to do about it? I am a man, and I'll do what a man has to do. <laughs> I'll call your wife and tell on you. Herman, does the expression tell, tell, you smell mean anything to you? <laughs> Herman? Oh, Herman? Oh, put that phone down! <laughs> I just wanted to let you all know that I'm leaving. On behalf of the research staff, we're glad you came. He won't be tomorrow. I'm recommending that this department be completely dismantled. Thank you, and have a nice day. I don't know what I think this meeting is going to do. Waterton is going to fire whomever he wants to fire. Yeah, no kidding. Louise, what the hell are you having in your mouth? Chewing tobacco. <laughs> A little pinch between my cheek and gum, I'm ready to roll. Louise, why did you start chewing tobacco? So I could give it up. Let me tell you something. It's gonna be easy. Oh, God, a mime. Have you been a mime long? Have you ever been thrown through a plate glass window? Lighten up, Mr. Bracken. It's me, Jay. <laughs> Jay, what are you doing dressed like that? Part of my training. All great actors were once mimes. Watch. What am I doing? Making a jackass out of yourself? <laughs> I'm going to France where I'll be appreciated. Don't let the imaginary door hit you on the way out. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Uh, well, I'm glad to see you. People have made it. I've uh, got some news for you. Just a second. Do I smell baked goods? <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, we're setting up a refreshment table. Refreshments? What kind of refreshments? Cookies, cakes, brownies, pies, puddings, candies, donuts, <laughs> ice cream sundaes. Are, are these going to be freshly baked? 
big guns? Sure. Now, I've been meeting over the past couple of days with Miss Wainwright, discussing a number of options we might take. And, and as for the Sundays, are those going to be make your own Sundays? Will you leave the man alone with the stupid refreshments? He came over here to talk to us for a reason. Thank you. I'm very attracted to you. And don't talk to me. <laughs> Look, if you're not interested in hearing what I have to say, we can just wait till I make my announcement to the entire group, all right? Wait, don't go. Hi, what are you guys talking about? And the man was talking about cakes and then cookies and... What are you? Why did you put that out? Because I'm done. Then light another one, damn it. Is he all right? Don't talk to me. Why are you talking to me? I think I got a meeting to start. If he was going to light another one, I know he was. Now, if I can have everyone's attention, please, we can get started. Excuse me, excuse me. Where are the baked goods? I was promised baked goods. <laughs> I'm sure they're on their way. Now, if there are no further questions, we can begin. I have a question. I'm sure that you do. Why do you keep staring at me like that? Could you please sit down? You want me and you know it. <laughs> What you need is a cigarette. If the people in research are through interrupting, we can finally begin. Now, I've met with Miss Wainwright, and we've come to an agreement. If everyone will take a 5% pay cut for the next two quarters, no one will be fired. Except for the research department. Our consultant recommends that we use an outside firm for research. She also suggests that you seek immediate psychiatric care. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to sit here and take this. I'm going to do something about it. Clear the decks. All bets are off. We're unemployed. Man, I could use a chew right about now. <laughs> Who's the new guy? Wait a minute. I have an idea. Look, look at us. Are we going to let it end like this? Are we going to give up without a fight? We have nothing to lose. And with nothing to lose, we have everything to gain. So I say we go see Waterdead and try to get our jobs back. God, what a sugar rush. <laughs> People believe in knocking. Knocking is for people who have something to lose, and we have nothing to lose. You've got my interest. Go on. Herman, I'll handle this. <gasps> Mr. Waterden. <gasps> Mr. Waterden. <gasps> You'll have to excuse Mr. Bracken, sir. He just smoked his own body weight in tobacco. Very impressive. Thank you, sir. <gasps> sir. <laughs> Well, you're probably wondering why we're here. First, Mr. Bracken said there was nothing to worry about. Then he started smoking, so I gave up cookies. Then the woman came, so we had a meeting. And L Hetty hasn't been on a date because Louise is chewing tobacco. That's why Bob Kelly gave me cookies. So we ate, and then we came up here to talk to you. Is it hot in here? <laughs> Crash and burn. That was a fine story. Now, what the hell was you talking about? Mr. Watson, the reason we're here is that we... we, we really... oh. Hello? Oh, Adam, I'm sorry. I can't talk right now. I'm with the president of the company. Oh, the Bahamas? Would you excuse me? My aunt is very ill. I'll be just a second. <laughs> Mr. Watson, we're here because you've dismantled our department. We've come to get our jobs back. By the way, this is a really nifty spittoon. It's not a spittoon, it's my mother's ashes. <laughs> Mr. Waterton, I am so sorry. It's okay. She was one big royal pain in the ass anyway. <laughs> wow. How long was I out for? Long enough for me to spit on his mother's grave. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You've all been fired, right? Yes, yes sir, that's right. right. Well, clearly, you people are lunatics. I've never seen such stressed-out, bizarre behavior in my whole life. 
I like it. Then why did you let her fire us? You people may be insane and incredibly overworked, but you're the best research department in the business. And if that consultant fired you, then she's crazier than all of us put together. Now get back to work. Thank you, Mr. Waterton. Uh, by the way, Herman, that 50 million, it was in my gray slacks the whole time. <laughs> Well, that was a close one. Yes, it was. Good thing Mr. Waterton is crazier than we are. He sure is. Do you have a date tonight? No. Me neither. Want to go to the movies? Sure, what the heck. You know, maybe I have been focusing too much on men. This will be good for me. Not having to worry about how much a man is willing to give me or what he's going to do for me. Aren't you going to open the door for me? Mind if I join you? Pull up some lids. Sit down. <sighs> Cigarette? No, oh, no thanks. I've got a three-month-old donut I've been saving for a special occasion. <laughs> you know, Mr. Bracken, I owe you an apology. You do? Yeah. I guess I got kind of preachy there for a while. It's very easy to tell someone to kick an addiction. It's a lot harder to do it. I realize that now. Well, thank you, Herman. I know I should quit, but it's not easy. I understand. Believe me, I understand. I really wish you'd try to stop, though. Herman, I'm just your boss. Why do you care if I smoke? Mr. Bracken, I wouldn't be out here with you right now if you were just my boss. My wife won't let me smoke. My kids won't let me smoke. Now you won't let me smoke. It must be awful having that many people care about you. <laughs> That Hetty down there? Yeah, that's her. Hey, watch it! To their families, they are mothers and wives. But to police, they're the nation's most dangerous women. This Hi, I'm Chuck Cameron from Power 92, and Get a Life and Sunday Comics are next on Fox TV 8. The former cop and Playboy Bunny convicted of murder. See the startling new evidence that could set her free. Watch America's Most Wanted. Now stay tuned for Get a Life.